All right, today we are going to learn about the five elements of drawing. Um, so on your page here, and this can just be in your sketchbook, you are just gonna title it five elements of drawing. I always like to underline things. So, and then what we're going to do is we are going to create a like box grid type thing. Obviously I do not have a ruler, so I am not expecting it to be perfect. It's just gonna take up most of the page. This little space over here actually can be smaller than the rest, okay? One tip, if you're like, holy moly, I don't know how to get a straight line that long. One tip is to watch where your pencil goes. The other thing is, is to use your whole arm. Instead of just trying to use your wrist, use your whole arm to pull it back. So just a little trick for you. So we need to have four columns in here. Um, so we are going to make three lines and that'll equal four. And again, some of them may be skinnier, wider than the others. It's not a big deal. I'm actually gonna, you can also go like this and sort of map it out at the top if you want. So we're gonna have this one and this one. All right, now we didn't mean, we need to make five rows. So these are columns, we need to make five rows. So if I wanna make five rows, I need to do four lines and I should have five rows. So let's see here, one here, one here, I'm going to have a, oh maybe not, I thought I was going to have a really giant space, but huh, pretty good. All right, so obviously things are not perfect and that's okay. So we made one big thing and we're going to go row by row together. So the first one, and these right here are gonna be our elements on the side here. And then we're gonna show you different types of them or how to use them or put them together. So the first one is called a dot. And a dot is like a circle, but colored in. What I love about dots is that if it's not perfect, you can just fill in a little area. So we're going to replicate that for this big, for this first one as well. We're just gonna make a big one. And again, I am not a perfect circle drawer, so that's not perfect. But the cool thing is, is that when I color it in, and dots don't always have to be colored in, but typically we color them in. So like I messed up on that side, I just erase a tiny bit but you can see that this side's a little not as rounded so the cool thing about coloring it in is I can come in and make it rounded and no one knew that that side wasn't perfect before right not that it's perfect now but you get the idea all right another way to do a dot is an oval so we're just going to draw actually we're going to make it a little bit more rounder ovals I always want to make them skinnier than what they are so ovals are a little bit rounded on the outside as well. They're not flat. If they're flat, they're an ellipse, which is what we're gonna do next. So we have to make sure that we have it different. Now I'm sort of coloring it in a little bit sloppily. So I gotta come back in and clean things up a little bit. So an oval is round on all sides. It's just an elongated dot. Okay. Oh, we should have made one more column. Oh man, we gotta make another one. I don't know what I was thinking. Sorry, hopefully you have space on your page. If you don't have space on your page, split the last one in half. It's okay if it's really skinny. That's my fault. Sorry about that. I was just looking at my example and I was like, oh man, we need another space. Okay, because after the ellipse, we have, um, we have another thing to do. So this next one is gonna be an ellipse. So an ellipse is what I drew first. An ellipse is straight on the sides and curved on the top or bottom or the or like the edges. All right, so it's straight with two curves. Like that, 
And again, all of these can be in different directions. So the oval could be sideways, it could be diagonal, whatever. Um, we just sort of are doing it this way just for right now. So an ellipse is like that. And sometimes ellipses have a little bit more of a point to them. Still rounded, but maybe just a little bit more pointy. And then the next one, this is a fun one, is a kidney bean. So a kidney bean, I love drawing them because they start, I always like to start at the top. It's just easier for me. So you make like two mountain shapes and then you round it back like that. So the five elements of drawing are things that if you look at any picture, anything that you've done, anything that you can do, they, um, they're part of it. So you could look at anything complicated, simple, and say, oh, I see a dot, I see a kidney, I see a line, which is what we're gonna do next. So there are, when we look at drawings or paintings or something we're going to do, I think we think, oh my goodness, this is so hard, I can't do this. But if we stop and take a deep breath and then focus on what are the five elements? How can we break them down in, into simple shapes or lines, those kinds of things. So that's why we're doing this. So that's all for the dot. The next one is line, like I said. Line. Boop. All right, so there's lots of different kinds of lines. There's broken lines. So it can just be a straight line. It can be sort of dashed. It can be diagonal next to each other. Um, this is a broken line. All right. And most lines that we see are broken, um, but some of them are a little bit longer, some of them are shorter. So that's a broken line. The next one we see are layered lines. So they are parallel to each other and they can come in all different shapes and styles, maybe a little bit farther apart from each other, um, but they are right next to each other. So layered lines are right next to each other. The next one we have are thick lines. So they can be, you can do two ways. One, you can make a big long rectangle, color it in, right? Or if you're really good, you can color it next to it. Just make sure that it's as, try to get it to be as thick on both ends, right? We don't want a really skinny end and a really thick end for our purposes. Maybe while you're doing it, maybe you need it to be. Um, but these are thick lines. So, and they don't have to be that thick. They could even just be thicker than what the pencil line is, All right? So that right there is a little bit skinnier than those, but it's thicker than that, right? So pretty easy. And then this last box doesn't have anything for line. The next work and we're, the next one, ooh, I couldn't talk there, is going to be a curve. And that's not perfect and that's okay all right that's the beauty of drawing so we have dot line curve for the next one and when you do a curve and this is how a lot of times people do circles is they make two curves and put them together um, sometimes it can be problematic because sometimes you'll get like a shape like this but if you practice we can get a good circle shape so a curve we can have like that like we did and our little line, or we can have it like that. All right, so it can be lots of different ways. And you see if I connected that, if I connect those together, it's more of an ovally shape, but I wasn't planning on connecting them. If you plan on connecting them, you can change your shape and stuff. They can also be intertwined. So here's a curve, and here's a curve. They can be elongated. So here's a curve and here's a curve. So it doesn't have to just stay in this shape. It can be elongated and different and put into different ways. It can even be sort of compact like a spiral.
So if you think about your something you would like to draw or an object in your room or wherever you are, if you think and you look at it and you say, okay, how can I break this down? Like if we even look at a pair of scissors, how can we break this down? Here is a line, straight line, straight line, right? If we come here, look it. This is like an elongated kidney shape. Here is a dot on the inside. On the outside is a elongated curve like this. Zoop. So if we really take a second just to stop and think, this scissors, they're not that hard, right? If we look at our five elements of drawing. So just something to think about. The next one we're going to do is angled. I always have to think about how to spell angle um, because um, sometimes I mix up the E and the L, but if you do it the other way, it's an angel. I always learned that if you spell angel and you forget to like, if you mix up those, do angels put gel in their hair? So you have A-N-G-E-L. So just a little tip for you. Totally not drawing related, but little tip. All right, so angled lines, definitely something that we need to know about. When we do angled lines, I really want you to break them down into steps. We're not gonna do them all at once. So the first angled line, I'm gonna go down, pick up my pencil, and then I'm gonna go back to the top, and I'm gonna do an angle up. All right, again, I'm gonna make another angle, and I'm going to go down, and back to the top and make another angled out. The reason why we wanna pick up our pencil, put it back down and do the other angle is that we really wanna make sure we're getting it to where we want it to go. I don't know about you, but there's been so many times where I've like not picked up my pencil and I've wanted to get to a certain point and it doesn't get there because I haven't picked up my pencil to look where I'm going. So this is a really great way to make sure you're getting it to go exactly where you want it to be. So another one, down. All right, picking up, and this one's just going to be a 90 degree angle, so it's going to be straight across. And then we can do another one, which is down, and then start at the top again and angle it down. So it sort of looks like it's folding down, but being able to pick up our pencil and go to a different spot really, really helps. So even this next one, we are going to go like, like say we want to make a check mark. I don't know about you, but my check marks always look different. Sometimes they're not, they're like crazy. Sometimes they're good. It just depends. But if I do it with this technique, I can get it to look good every time. So if I start on one end, angle it towards the middle a little bit, right? And I go back to where I stopped and I go up to where I want to go, it's a lot easier and looks better. Same with like a V. If I start at the top and come down to the middle, a lot of times people want to start at the top and come back down to the middle. And it feels easier that way. It's sort of what we want to do. But if I start at the bottom, then I know it's going to end up here, right? And if I go to the top, then I, I have it connected exactly how I want. I don't know how many times, and you guys don't have to do this, but I've had like a V and I've started up here and then it like is wonky and it's not because it's not gonna get to where I need it to go. So you just have to have to just change your thinking a little bit and how you're doing things. But they can also be sort of connected together to make different shapes. And we're not gonna, I mean, you can see how they can be connected. So again, we're gonna go, and we're gonna do two different shapes in here just so, just so that you know, especially if you had to split this box up. So make them a little bit small if you need to. So we're gonna go down and across. And then we're gonna go back up close to here. We're gonna go across, pick up our pencil and go down. So each time I picked up my pencil, I did not just do it in one fail swoop. So you can make it long as well. We're gonna go from the top to the bottom, pick up our pencil, make a 90 degree angle, go back up to the top, make a 90 degree angle and come back down, okay? And then they don't always have to be boxes, right? Because we have some of these angles. So if you take it and you go from the, the middle and go out to the left, pick up your pencil, go straight across, go back up here to the middle, go out to the right, pick up your pencil, come across, right? And so same with the V, when you want to make like mountain shapes, 
We're gonna start at the, you can start at the top or at the bottom. Sometimes I like to start at the top because I know where I'm going. Start at the top, go to the bottom. Come back up to the top, go to the bottom. All right, so it's a little bit easier if you do it that way. You can also do it the opposite way where you go from the bottom to the top, but then don't go back to the bottom. Start at the top again, pick up your pencil and go back down like that, okay? The next thing, this one is fun. It's putting it all together. So putting it all together. So taking all of these things and putting in here, which I know you're like, well, the five elements, but this is an element of it. This is taking everything and putting it together to create these five things. So we're gonna do a couple of them together. And then the last one you're gonna be doing on your own and they'll get progressively harder as we go along. So this first one, we're gonna do a curve like that. And then we're gonna put an angled line in there. And we're gonna start at the top left, go down to the middle, come lift our pencil up, go to the bottom in the middle and go back up to the upper right. That one's it, pretty easy. All right, this one has an X in it and I wanna show you how to do it. So the first thing you can do is you can put your pencil up on the upper left and then bring it all the way down. Now, I don't know about you, but a lot of times I will do an X and I'll start up here and go down, but it doesn't line up how I want it to. So if I want it perfectly in the middle, I find the middle, right? And then I do a line going straight up, sort of like we did with our V. And then I can take a line here and making sure it's opposite of that, go straight down. And it just makes it look a little bit cleaner and nicer instead of having this like weird wonky angle that doesn't line up. We're gonna put a dot on this one. So we're gonna color that in because our dots are solid. Again, they don't always have to be, but we're gonna make them like that. And then we're gonna do two curves to make a circle. So you can either do it like this, where you have a top and a bottom put together, or you can do it where you have like a side and a side put together. Completely up to you. Maybe you test things out a little bit. So we are gonna do, I'm gonna do a side and a side. I typically do top and bottom, but I'm gonna try something different. So I'm gonna do a curve here and then I pick up my pencil and do another curve on this side. Oh, huh, that doesn't look too bad. All right, so this next one is gonna require a little bit more direction. So just pay attention, stop it if you need to. So we are going to start a little bit above halfway. We're gonna do a broken line right there, okay? Then we're gonna do a curve and then we're gonna do another broken line out to the side. In the middle here, we're gonna make another one of these curves put together. And I'm gonna have it like sort of up in the dome area. So I'm gonna do a curve and another curve. And again, it's not perfect, but that's okay. And then underneath it, I'm gonna do a curve that goes like this inside of there right? Then I'm going to do a broken line out to the side. Oh, I made that a little too tall. And a broken line out to the side. And then I'm going to do a dot on each end. So here's a dot. And here's a dot. Okay, so broken line, curve, broken line, two curved lines, one curved line, broken line, broken line, dot, dot. We're going to do another big curve like this one. So try to get it directly underneath, but again, it's not gonna be perfect. I definitely don't make it perfect. And then we're gonna copy what we had on the top. Broken line out to the side, broken line out to the side. We're gonna go to the middle of the top and go straight up, the middle of the bottom and go straight down. And then we're gonna make curves going out. So a curve, oh, well, that one was not very good, a little wonky, but that's okay. Curve, curve, curve. So I know this doesn't look like anything, but we took almost everything and put it together. The only thing that we didn't do was an angled line in here, but everything else we did, okay? So this last box is your choice box. You get to pick what do you want to create in that box. But this is your five elements of drawing. Again, we can take anything that we look at, 
break it down and really see what are these shapes that we have or these lines or these curves to create what we have. And hopefully, once you start practicing this, it'll make it a whole lot easier for you on drawing.